Hello, math students. Today we are still looking at functions. That's what our whole chapter is about, is about functions. But we're going to be comparing linear functions with nonlinear functions. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we can just look at a table like what we've got here. And remember, if it's going to be linear, that means it has a constant rate of change. That's that crock that we talked about when we were graphing lines. So you can even see here in A, they figured out that the y's, remember we're always going to do the y's first, even though they're on the bottom of this table. Um, the change in y is de decreasing by 8 every single time, and the x's are increasing by 3. So decrease by 8 every single time, increase by 3. That means that the constant rate of change with the slope would be negative 8 thirds. It doesn't even really matter here. This is just asking, is it linear? or nonlinear, this is linear because it does have a constant rate of change. In B, there's a pattern, it's a little harder to see, but clearly not linear. When I look at the y's, it increases by 9 and it increases by 22. If it changes, if it's not constant, this is going to be nonlinear. One and two here, it does say to graph these, and I'll even say number one doesn't even really fit on the graph. But you should be able to do this without a graph. Usually I'm not even going to want you to graph these. I want to be able to figure out, does this have a constant rate of change? So the change in y, this is decreasing by four to go from positive four to negative, or to zero. And then it increases by four. Without the graph, I can tell you right now, this is nonlinear. I could certainly graph this and have negative 2, 4, and then 0, 0, and then 2, 4, which is kind of in the middle of this stuff. But even without graphing that last one, you can see it's curving. That is definitely not a straight line. It's nonlinear. When I look at number 2, this is going to increase by 2, increase by 2, increase by 2. This is going to decrease, or I'm sorry, increase by one, increase by one, increase by one. This is definitely linear. And again, for this one problem, I can still graph this. Negative one, negative one, zero, one, one, three, and then two, five won't fit. But um, you could still see that that's going to be um, linear, even though I can't get that last point on the graph but definitely a straight line there, even if I can't draw a straight line very well. If I'm giving you problems that are already graphed, you should be able to tell if this is linear or nonlinear. Again, linear just means it's a straight line. Letter A is clearly not a straight line. I'm just going to go with NL for nonlinear. And B, it's a horizontal line. It doesn't really matter that it's horizontal. It's definitely linear. Again, three, um, most people, and I should have just gone with L on the last one. That's definitely linear. Some people look at number four, and they want to say linear because they say each part of it is a straight line. But when I look at the entire thing, if it's turning here, it's going downhill, and then it turns and it goes uphill, this is nonlinear. The whole thing has to be one straight line for it to be linear. On these problems, again, don't bother taking out graph paper. For number one, this is decreasing by five. Decreasing by five, decreasing by five. Let's check the axes. This is increasing by seven, increased by seven, increased by seven. I don't care what the slope is. It happens to be negative five sevenths. But this is definitely linear because we would make a straight line if I graph this. In number two, this is decreased by four, decreased by four, decreased by four. Here, increase two, increase two, increase two. Linear. Number three, nonlinear. Not one straight line. This question is asking <clears throat> which one of these is a nonlinear function? Now, when we graphed problems that were linear, we used slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Um, 
some of these we can recognize parts of y equals mx plus b or we could get to y equals mx plus b um, but for a for instance y equals just a number that's just a horizontal line that's fine b i know throwing pi in there might throw you off but pi is still just a number that's just y equals some number times x y equals mx plus zero that's linear d when i would look at this if i would distribute it I would get y equals 4x minus 4. That one is definitely slope intercept form. Here's the issue with c. If I can't get slope intercept form, and it's because I have something like the variable, the x is in the denominator, or if there's an exponent, if it can't look like y equals mx plus b, that's the one that's nonlinear. So c is our answer on that one. Here I've got two different accounts, and I'm not asking you to crunch the numbers. I've got them all figured out. Account A has simple interest. You can see the numbers there. Account B has clearly changing numbers as we go. Um, and you can see it, hey, it's increasing by 10 every single time. I can tell you that one's going to be linear because account B is not changing by the same amount. This is adding 10 adding 11, clearly not linear. But here are my two graphs. Account A, you can see, is linear. Account B is curving. It says, how are the graphs changing? So account A is changing by the same amount all the time. Account B is increasing a little bit each time. That is um, just nonlinear. So what types of, type of graphs do we have? Linear, nonlinear for those two. For this problem, We've got the area of a square, side length is x, and then substitute different numbers into the x. Does the table represent linear or nonlinear function? We don't have to graph this. Look at these areas. This is increasing by 3, increased by 5. I could stop right there, but I'm going to say increased by 7. There's a pattern, yes, but it is nonlinear. In each of these, just looking at the equations, I want to know if they are linear or nonlinear. Slope intercept form. Four looks like slope intercept form, so this one's going to be linear. Number five, I know some people might be worried about that fraction that's in there, but I could write it as y equals four thirds x. I could even put a plus zero here. That is definitely linear. That's slope intercept form. Six is nonlinear because of that little guy right there, that exponent on the variable makes it nonlinear. Today's assignment is a book page, but I made it into a worksheet for you. Um, 1 through 17 and number 21, there are some problems that say to graph them. You're not going to graph them. You're just going to look at um, the table values and figure it out. The answer keys in Schoology, and then make sure that you do the learning check when you're done. Let me know if you need any help.